I'm here to talk about food and tourism, really about developing a local strategy and the experiences that we had in Melton Mowbray. For those of you that don't know Melton Mowbray, it's a small town in the uh, middle of Leicestershire, about, uh, 30, about, sorry, about 80 miles north of uh, Birmingham. Does this work? Oops, sorry. Okay, food and tourism. For me, food to, uh, is an extremely important aspect of the tourism experience. For me, if I'm going to a place, what often brings the memories back is, is the food. And everybody knows that smell and taste are two of the sort of primeval senses that we have that immediately take you back to childhood uh, and to, uh, to early memories. So a positive visit um, to a place in terms of the food experience can actually give you a reason for going back, but also when you talk about the food and about the people and whatever, it actually gives other people then a recommendation to visit. There are two aspects for me that are important. One is the food in the tourism hospitality industry itself, but also food as a tourist attraction. And it's this latter aspect that I want to explore in the further detail towards the end of the presentation. Looking at the hospitality industry and the, the tourism industry that goes with it, I, I'm part of the Melton to, uh, Tourism Forum, which we call Melton Promotions, and also Leicestershire Promotions. And that's where we see this link between the food aspects and the food producers and also the tourism industry. So it obviously has the restaurants, the cafes, the pubs, hotels, B&Bs, the, the garden centres, because they actually have uh, cafes inside them, and they also have the gift shops where they have uh, cheeses, biscuits, and all the rest of it. And really what our message right at the start of our campaign was, was to, to raise the use of local food in this sector. Once you start that, then you get the home base. Then actually then you give people and local producers a reason for producing and also a sort of stability in terms of, uh, of their economy and, and a sort of guaranteed base level of supply. So when we started and looking at this, it's really looking at, for example, local menus. Uh, with a, a sort of map of sourcing. And in fact, I have stayed uh, last night in the Stormont Hotel, uh, absolutely fascinated by what they're doing there in Belfast. And I've got a little booklet here called Who Made My Breakfast? Brilliant concept. I've never seen anything like it. I have to say the breakfast is one of the best I've had for a long, long time. And I've been in some pretty classy places. But this breakfast, as I say, you can say where the bread came from, where the granola came from, where the muesli came from, uh, the, 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 uh, the sausages, the eggs, the rest of it. What a brilliant concept. Who made my breakfast? And uh, I say I'm a bit embarrassed actually being here in front of you lot because listening to what's being said and the examples, I think actually you ought to be coming over to talk to us about your experiences and to have actually a tourism forum on food. I mean, I've been trying to get the Visit, Visit England to be doing that for the last 10 years and uh, you've made an achievement here already. So if we go back then in terms of what food and tourism, the hospitality activities are about, as I say, local menus with, with a map of sourcing, locally sourced meals, for example, the Melton breakfast. I was up in our broth in the, uh, um, up, up at Angus County, and there they have the famous Arbroath Smoky. But the restaurant, or the, sorry, the B&B I stayed at, didn't have an Arbroath Smoky anywhere near breakfast. Well, why didn't they have an Arbroath breakfast where you could have actually enjoyed an Arbroath Smoky? We also have competitions in terms of local food content, uh, an award for the best menu, the best innovative idea in the use of, for example, Stilton cheese, which comes from our area, um, the uh, menu with the, the most local ingredients. And then this idea of having new uh, recipes with local ingredients. We've got lots of good chefs in the area. Local ingredients, unusual uses for, for, for cheese. And in fact, um, Stilton cheese now is actually both is an ice cream uh, and in a local beer. Ice cream doesn't sell that well, but the local beer with Stilton goes down uh, extremely well. Um, a local food week, so for example, uh, we have a Stilton week and we have the Leicestershire Food Fortnight. And there's lots of menu, uh, lots of uh, restaurants and uh, hotels out there which have um, their standard menu. And people come in and they only choose a couple of items from that menu each time they turn up. And so we've now had the concept of trying something new week and also then a, a discount restaurant week. So in terms of what we've done is to, my suggestion in terms of you know, an area developing a tourism strategy is to 
obviously, you've got to start with the basics, the list of food outlets, the restaurants, the cafes, the pubs. Know who's in the area. Also then to see what the producers are, what the list of producers, what uh, they, uh, they're, in fact, the, the, the offer. You've got the demand from the tourism side, the hospitality sector, and then the offer from the, from the producer side. And it's quite uh, interesting, once you start digging what's in the area, uh, you know, who's producing what. We have, for example, not only the beef and lamb producers, but we also have venison. We even have bison in the area. And bison burgers, for those of you who have not had them, and as I say, we'll forget, skip the, uh, the bit about the horse trading. But the bison burgers are uh, actually very low cholesterol, and for those who are on uh, low cholesterol diets, uh, they can actually start towards the, the bison burger. So we're starting to produce this food directory, and this both on the paper uh, directory in, in terms of booklet and also uh, in terms of web uh, site. So having this then, we produce the map and the list of local food suppliers, the outlets and the markets, and start to marry the two. But in every area, you've got a history of local foods, you've got old recipes, those sort of things which you actually start to bring back and people find an interest in them. You know, in, in our area, Melton Mowbray Plough Day, for example, at lunch, there's the Melton Cheesecake, Beaver Castle Buns, a whole variety of old recipes from books that, uh, and, and, and families that date back to 1700s. Um, and those actually are now starting to be used by our restaurants in terms of a, of a new offer. And of course, important, obviously, is the uh, awareness and training of local chefs. Um, and at Loughborough College, for example, where they have a school of catering, training local chefs in terms of the use of local foods and what recipes they can use and, uh, and food provenance. And uh, we now use a, a logo for our restaurants and our food outlets in terms of Taste Leicestershire. My suggestion, as I say, is really in terms of working this um, area, is to get people working together. It's the hospitality sector, it's the food sector. And it's actually forming a partnership. That's why we formed the Melt Mowbray Food Partnership, looking at the needs of the hospitality sector in terms of food and drink, and then looking at this availability of local foods. But then it then moves on for that. It's also in terms of things like, for example, um, new dishes uh, for picnics, those sort of things which people haven't used before. I'd like to then move really on to this aspect which I think is the most important in terms of new developments, and certainly one that's uh, helped our area, and that's food tourism. The sort of uh, mantra has been, while you're in Northern Ireland, why don't you try the local food? And we have that right up and down the country in terms of the UK. While in Yorkshire, by the way, if you're in York, why don't you go to this restaurant or try this food? Now, we've actually put it, stood it on its head, and we've said, why don't you go to the area because of the local food? And in our area, we don't have very much to offer, but we do have some very good local food. So why don't you visit Northern Ireland to try the local food? And here in uh, Northern Ireland, you're very blessed in terms of local specialities. We've mentioned some of them today, and you've sampled them at, uh, at the brunch. The Loch Nails and the salmon and the venison and the potatoes, etc. You've got some very well-known dishes, famous producers, excellent restaurants. You've got a number of local fairs and events coming up. Uh, some fabulous food outlets and markets, and quite a rich food heritage of the culture and tradition, and one or two food trails to developing. All of which, actually, for those increasing number of foodies out there, gives them a reason to visit. You've noticed the number of TV programmes that are on food and the celebrity chefs. And I've now actually been in the all three series of Great British Bake Off in terms of a, a piece on food history and whatever. Five million people watch that programme. And when something comes up, for example, on Melt Moby pork pies, all the pork pie makers think, oh, heavens, if it's been on the, uh, that previous weekend, for the following weekend, they're baking extra, double the number of pork pies, because they know that a lot of people are going to be turning up at the pork pie shop looking for those pork pies. The, um, the, the, uh, the interest in food is phenomenal, and people are travelling now to destinations, not to look at buildings, but because of the food. Here you've got a unique climate and geographical location. I know for most of us, rain is an inconvenience, but actually in terms of growing great food, rain is actually quite essential, and a unique landscape. And as I say, there's that cultural heritage part which is very important. You have a unique story to tell. People want to taste, to see, but also to experience. 
They want to buy the product. They want, obviously, want to taste and eat it. They're very curious and see how it's made. And often I've seen in, in, in the Melton area, people sort of wandering around, they want to see how Stilton cheese is made or how a pork pie is raised. People have a curiosity to go back to roots and see, not just on the supermarket shelf and see the end product, but to see how it's being made. And to that extent, a tourism offer, which includes those experiences of seeing how things are made, how animals are reared and all the rest of it, actually is quite a powerful offer. And of course, if they can make it for themselves, that's even better. So in terms of a food action plan, and I'll go on to our example shortly, identify the local specialities, the producers, buy at places where they can buy or eat the product, research the food, um, the area's food heritage, and then of course if you've got iconic foods like we have in our area, Melt Moby pork pie, Stilton cheese, and there's one or two others coming up, then of course that actually then sort of puts you there above the, uh, above the rest of the, the area. Where can they see it being made? And if possible, where can they make it themselves? Obviously, what you need is very friendly uh, producers. We have one who is the most grumpy person you can possibly imagine. And Jamie Oliver wanted to come to the area, and I thought, oh, heavens. But his son, actually, is a real, a, a really um, passionate person, and he's got a lovely sense of humor. So I made sure that the father was away and the son was there. And of course, the program went like went a breeze. So it's really having those producers who are passionate about the product, but able to talk about them, and also interested in talking about them and interested in the media. Obviously, having relevant literature. We now produce a, uh, leaflets on the food trails and our food history. Uh, you may not know, but the first wedding cake was made in the Melton area. Um, afternoon tea was actually invented at Beaver Castle in the Melton area. So there's a whole string of things that we have in our area and our food history, which people, oh, I didn't know that, that's quite interesting. And of course, as you mentioned here, Sloan with the uh, founding of milk chocolate. I didn't know that until I came to Northern Ireland. Fascinating piece of history. And I'm sure there's lots more in, you know, in nooks and crannies all about the province that you know, actually would raise the profile of this area. And um, interestingly, people are prepared to say, and if you go to Wensleydale, I don't know if anybody's been to Wensleydale to see the creamery there. Some, when they first started, they um, had a, a visitor centre, which is an old barn with a few bits and pieces of old uh, cheese-making equipment. And then they had the idea of cutting a window in this, um, and it's a prefab building, to be honest, where they make the cheese. And the number of people who would gawk them, be prepared to pay £2.50 just to gawk in and see what they were up to of making this cheese. Now, of course, some now dairies have become much more sophisticated and you get the guided tour. And nearby, there's a, uh, the Black Sheep Brewery. You pay £4.50 and they'll take you on a guided tour around the brewery and explain how beer is made. And of course, the sales in the farm shop afterwards shoot through the roof once people have been through that, farm sh uh, through that production. So all of which sort of says that people are passionate about food, people are interested about food, and that there is a reason itself for people to go and visit an area. In terms of food heritage, people are now becoming more interested in what did our ancestors eat and how. We've actually created a restaurant in time in the area. We had an exhibition once, and it was uh, at the East Midlands Food Festival about four years ago, five years ago. And it was 3,000 years of food in the area because we have one of these ancient um, Iron Age forts there. And we had reenactors from different periods of history. Those, you know, you know the sealed knot people, for example, who reenact the Civil War in England. Well, we had reenactors from different periods of history, different societies like the Vikings of Middle England, the Georgian Society, the Tudor Club, etc. And each one set up a little encampment within an area and showed how food was made from that area, from that era. But also, then, we had replica meals produced by a professional company from as if you were in a restaurant in Saxon period, in the Georgian period, in Tudor times, etc. And the number of people who actually came to that exhibition and wanted to see where food came from. Little do people realize that before 1492, chocolate wasn't on the menu, potatoes weren't on the menu, tomatoes weren't on the menu. These are all recent, fairly recent inventions or, or discoveries from the new world. And people are fascinated by food and food history. When was the fork produced? And now there's actually a quite a, a nice little book 
uh, called uh, Consider the Fork. And it's about how our food and eating styles have changed. Um, and people think of Henry VIII with uh, the chicken bones and throwing them over, over his shoulder. No, in the Middle Ages, there was a very strict etiquette in terms of food and food history and, and manners at the table. All of which is uh, now people are, are starting to discover and find uh, fascinating in terms of TV programs, but also trying to read books and a number, if you go onto any book sh uh, shelf and look at the top bestsellers, how many of those are associated with food? There's a rich vein there, and it's up to us to exploit it. And of course, we've got the food display in museums, heritage centres, and stately homes, Beaver Castle, or Rockingham Castle nearby. More people are interested in the kitchens now than interested in the bedrooms. Fascinating, that. But the amount of time they spend will be in the kitchen trying to find out how people cook those foods. And these programs of Downton Abbey and Upstairs, Downstairs, what are they interested in? They're interested in the servants' part and the kitchens. It's up to, up to us to exploit that. And of course, as I say, don't forget the drink. Um, people, when they go out, I mean, you buy food at the supermarket, and people think that's all people buy. But actually, what they're interested in is buying the basics in the supermarket, and then the, the luxury items or the, the quality items, they'll actually go out of the way and look for, for, for producers. And we have events around a product like you know, pork pie and silk and cheese. But here you've got a, an ample opportunity for an eels week or whatever. Um, or in an area, you've got a, a number of food festivals starting in an area. And then one of the increasing, uh, we found, uh, interest is in people wanting to do courses. Um, hotels and restaurants in our area now are putting on courses, an evening of, with a chocolatier, evening of pork pie raising. Fascinating how many people are really now interested in that. And there's a, a local school of, cook, of uh, cookery which actually does a pig in a day. They take a whole pig. From that pig, they'll produce the bacon, the ham. They'll show you how to make sausages, all sorts of things from that, uh, from that one pig. And it's called a pig in a day. Um, you know, and, and when people are starting to pay two to three hundred pounds for a day um, on a cookery course, you think, mm, that's some money there. Uh, you know, a restaurant uh, or a hotel putting on a, a couple of those once a month uh, actually starts to produce quite significant income. So I want to talk to you a little bit about now, in summary, really, of our case history in Melton Mowbray. Um, and as I say, a small town, 25, population 25,000, not noted for, for very much. One of the smallest districts in the, council, in, the, in the country, one of the most sparsely populated districts, and really sort of left to ourselves. Um, 1997, we had the closure of our, of our only mine in the area, closure of a number of things, declining agriculture, unemployment about 25%, and sort of thinking, how on earth do we get out of this mess? How do we get out of this hole? And we thought of a number of things, and suddenly we thought, well, how stupid. It's got to be food. Melton Moby. Whenever I ring anybody up and I say, oh, Melton Moby, they say, pork pies. And it just seemed logical. Food, pork pies. And of course, we've got Stilton cheese in the area. If you look at places like Ludlow and other places, um, they may be famous for food, but Trouble is, in some places, it's come day go day. Go day. You have a, a place which has got a couple of good uh, Michelin restaurants or a good food fair. The trouble is that when the, the, the chef leaves or the food fair stops, what have you got left? Not a lot. So to that extent, you, I think you need a sort of permanence of an offer. And certainly for us, we have the third oldest uh, recorded market in the country. We have obviously the Melton Mowbray pork pie, we have Stilton cheese, the expression painting the town red comes from, from Melton Mowbray. In fact, it was an Irish Marquis who got blind drunk and um, put a pocket, a bucket of red paint and started daubing everybody and eventually was arrested and uh, sent for trial and charged 30 guineas for painting the town red. Capital of fox hunting and the invention of afternoon tea. So you can see there's a sort of little bit of a background and a history to, to the area in terms of food. We obviously have the pork pie, we have the Stilton cheese, and we have the Melton Hunt cake. But we now start to get unusual foods such as bison. We're also one of the largest producers of tofu for the Japanese restaurants. We actually make um, cheese, paneer cheese, for the Indian restaurants in Leicester. So history of local foods, but also branch, branching out into the ever-increasing ethnic market. 
We have a number of assets, such as we have a cattle market right in the town centre, um, a livestock market, 6,000 sheep sold on a, uh, on a Tuesday. We have um, the uh, livestock, uh, the, 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 the cattle side, obviously, but also we have the fur and feather, which sells ferrets and rabbits and geese and all sorts of uh, animals. We've got a, one of the finest churches in the whole of the, uh, the Midlands and a number of other attractions in this area. But it's really, we're not, we haven't got anything big. So the idea is to make it as a great day out or a weekend and start to extend from a day out into a weekend offer. Mm -hmm. All right. So you can see there's the, the church. that We do have a castle in the area, but the Duke now has gone mardy, as we say in Leicestershire, and doesn't want anybody traipsing around his house, as he calls it. So the castle effectively is closed. Um, and to that extent, we have to rely on other things. But there's the church, there's the cattle market. We get something like 4,000, 5,000 people into the cattle market um, each Tuesday, just wandering around, seeing how animals are sold and wanting to see. It's one of the biggest free shows uh, in the area. And of course, when it's bank holiday or it's uh, half term, the number of uh, parents with kids going into the cattle market, quite uh, significant. And of course, they then boost local trade. The old pork pie shop, quarter of a million people go through that door every year. It's one of the top 10 attractions in the, in the county. So, in terms of our uh, tourism strategy, we started, okay, we'll take the Melton Moby pork pie and start looking at that in terms of protecting its, uh, in terms of geographical protection, uh, which obviously helps in terms of promoting the area, promote the area in connection with, with cheese, develop a tourism concept. And so we came up with the strap line, Melton Mowbray, rural capital of food. And now increasingly, journalists, whenever they refer to Melton Mowbray, Melton Mowbray, rural capital of food. And the idea was then to increase the amount of local food in the hospitality sector, which is now significant, promote the areas of food destination and develop a, an events and award program. There's the painting the town read, the famous uh, Marquis of Waterford. Obviously we had to get buy-in, so we formed the Melton Mowbray Food Partnership and we formed the, also the Port Pie Association. So we got all the pie makers together, all the cheese makers together for Stilton Cheese. The local council actually got involved and started uh, supporting it. We got the people from the tourism sector. Whole host of people in terms of the partnership to, to um, support this concept of branding the town. And we were quite ruthless about it. When people started to ask for grants for other um, non-food aspects, we said, no, it's food. We have to stick to food. That's what the brand is about. That's what the promotion is about, food. We can go on to the other things later, but really it's to try and get that concept. And of course, obviously, the part of the problem that everybody faces, and someone mentioned the profit in their own country, is convincing the locals. So here's the Melton Mowbray Food Partnership. Farmers, farm organisations, National Farmers Union, various producers, the processors, the manufacturers, the, retail, the retailers, the farmers market, the distributors, Chamber of Commerce. Important local colleges and schools, getting them involved so that there's that sort of heritage which will be passed on. The local council and of course the hospitality sector is very extremely important. Developing that sense of pride, so we, we actually produce the leaflet on food and uh, for, for tourists. But in fact we actually, the extra copies, we've printed 25,000 extra which went to every household in the borough. So that everybody knew what we were doing but also they would then pass it to their family and invite their aunt to stay and say, oh, by the way, did you know, et cetera, et cetera. And so that developed a lot more internal tourism within the area, encouraging friends and family to visit. And we then put the new signs for the borough. Borough of Melton, home of Stilton cheese and Melton Moby pork pies. A free advert. Every time the people pass on the A46, you know, the traffic on that main road, arterial road in the country, the number of people who see that sign and think, why don't we stop off in Melton Mowbray? Why don't we visit it or whatever? And each time we have a, a fair or a festival or something connected with food, we then put at the bottom of that sign a runner which says cheese fair and gives the dates. Free advertising, but as I say, the number of people that pass by that, uh, incredible. And in fact, it's now being copied. So there's a little village about five miles south of us called Syston. And they've now got Syston, home of the Syston plum. Bless them.
producer, actually quite a remarkable plum pie as well. Mm. So, promoting the concept, familiarisation visits, getting in touch with the local media, regular invites to journalists. And, of course, you know, you've got to spend to, to earn, so to that extent, free night up in a, in a local hotel. Taking time to show them around and being there when they want to, rather than, than yourselves. Vigorous press and media campaigns. As I say, always looking for that new angle and having media-friendly producers, extremely important. And then working with, with the neighbours, we're a small borough. So to that extent, we've created something called Meltonshire. It doesn't exist. It's, the county is Leicestershire, but bless them. We call it Meltonshire. And to that extent, tourists don't recognise boundaries, so it's working with people even outside our borough area so that the concept in terms of tourism, they've got a, a wider offer, like Rutland Water, which is in the county of Rutland, Rockingham Castle, which is in Northamptonshire, Stamford, which is in Lincolnshire, the Grantham Canal in Lincolnshire, with the city of Nottingham in Nottinghamshire. But it's working with other partners across our area and outside our boundaries so as to produce this wider concept of Meltonshire, and so that when people come to the area, they've got a much wider uh, offer. And, and I know that uh, people say, well, why are we putting them in our leaflets? We're putting them in our leaflets to promote Melton because then it means that they look at it and think, oh gosh, that's an interesting place to visit. I can go to Rutland Morton, I can go sailing, or I can do, uh, go to visit Rockingham Castle, etc. It's, yes, it's promoting them, but it's actually getting people into the area um, and staying hopefully longer than just the, the one day. Oops. So, as I say, again, if I'm repeating from what I said earlier, it's the menus, it's the farmers markets, the sporting the delis, the farm shops, it's having a food database of producers and retailers, it's that research of promotion of local food heritage. And of course, it's then the food events, the food awards, and that important aspect of, of, of leisure tourism. In terms of the... In terms of the events, Events are very useful because they get you a headline in the paper or um, a sort of a, a notice in the media above the ordinary. And it's interesting how many of our events now are actually flagged up by the national media, both television, radio, and also in, 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 the, in the print media. It's, it's this idea of refreshing the offer throughout the year. And you can see now the number of things we start to, we start to operate. Every Tuesday, we now have 12, at least 12 coaches coming in on a market day. Just of people, 55 people in a coach, uh, wanting to wander around the town, to go to the farm shop, to go to the pork pie shop, to go to the cheese shop, to go to the uh, livestock market and whatever. That brings in a fair amount of income in terms of, and that's just, we don't do any promotion, we just provide the spaces for the coaches and they turn up. Uh, and you know, it's a, st a, st a steady stream. And of course, if we have then an event, Obviously, then it's a lot more. For the Victorian Fair, we had 48 coaches uh, come on the, uh, in December of last year. A lot of people. Um, and so we've now started to develop this ongoing programme of, of, of events, British Pie Awards, Cheese Fair, Country Fair, Pie Fest, etc., etc. British, <coughs> British Pie Awards, we started that three years ago. Um, and we hold it in the church in St Mary's, which is sort of designed like a mini cathedral. This year, we had 900 pies. Um, and uh, in, the, in the last festival. And we had 78, um, um, 78 judges. And those judges, actually, the Xanthi Clay, who writes for The Telegraph, the Sheila Dillon, who does the, is the producer of the BBC Radio 4 Good Food programme, Charles Campion, they're all on television, they're all in the media and whatever. We don't pay them a, a penny to come, but they come and judge the Pie Awards, and then immediately then we are on the Chris Evans Radio um, uh, 2 show, or we're on the... Um, BBC um, One show um, on BBC One. The amount of media coverage we get for that event, something like 35 million hits. So it's quite significant in terms of promoting the town and whatever. And as a result of our, our efforts, income from tourism, as I say, we're the 10th smallest borough in the country. 68 million pounds developed from food tourism alone. 1.8 uh, million tourist days uh, spent in the area. So quite a, a significant impact on us. 
Number of jobs, 1,000, income per resident, 1,500 pounds generated per resident on tourism. Prior to the recession, when we started this project, we had unemployment at about 25%. Prior to the recession, unemployment went to below 1%. And in fact, one of the um, editorials in the Guardian newspaper was that we had the lowest number of uh, claimants for unemployment benefit in terms of percentage of the population in the whole country. And the Guardian leader said, well, Melton must uh, are showing us something more than just pork pies. It was this focus and this dedication on food. It was this idea of getting all the producers together, all the retailers, the whole town and the borough focused on the concept food, promoting it, living it, and, and, and believing in it. And it has, for us, it's worked. And just in terms of three months' coverage, Great British Bake Off, uh, TV programme Abe in Britain, Kirsty Olsop, uh, Olsop uh, Handmade Britain, Jamie Oliver, his uh, TV series Great Britain, The One Show on the British Pie Awards, The One Show on Silt and Cheese, regional television. And that's just in three months, that amount of coverage. You couldn't pay for it. Certainly on the BBC, you wouldn't be, you would be able to pay for it. But the amount of people that see it and come to our area and start to use it. And this terms of leisure uh, tourism, I say not just taste, but the experience, seeing things being made. Beaver Brewery completely remodeled the brewery so that people could actually now go around and see it. And they have now a mini microbrewery such that they have a hen party or a stag night. And then you can actually brew your beer that night and then they bottle it up and then you have it for the wedding or for whatever. People want to learn how to make things. And that's why we're starting the School of Rural Food in the area, pies, cheese, bread, and whatever. And in terms of uh, tourist accommodation, we now have Taste of Leicestershire, an accommodation offer, two nights, um, sorry, one night for a couple, uh, £110 uh, in a three-star hotel with dinner and a um, uh, breakfast, and then a, an opportunity to go around the brewery to do uh, hand-raised pork pies, still, uh, cheese uh, tasting, etc. generated just in the short period of the campaign that we launched it, 400 extra bed nights in the area. So you can see people there making the Mount Mobile pork pie. Similar, I went to give a talk to Angus County Council. Again, look at what they've got to offer and, and that sort of food offering which people, I'm sure, would be only too uh, keen to go and see the, how gingerbread has been made, the tasting of whiskey and the salmon and whatever. And of course here, as I say, you've got an immense variety of foods, great dishes, great events, some of the most superb restaurants around and you're starting this school, the, some of these schools of cookery. So, summary, what's unique about the area? If it's relevant, apply for food protected name status, which some of you have. How are you going to promote the food strategy? And as I say, I think you're already doing it. Are there opportunities for people to see how things are made? And people always want, as I say, to see how things are being made. Can you make production more visible? What local partnerships have you got? And this sense of developing pride locally. The, the food trails that you're developing, and then, of course, there's all the, the events um, that, uh, that, that, that you're starting to develop. And in terms of the food partnership, it's, uh, my view is that local authorities need to get far more involved in this, either city councils or, or borough councils, in terms of supporting the creation of these partnerships between food and tourism. And you can see the sort of list that, uh, that we have. So, I'll say developing the partnerships, seeing tourism as a key sector for economic development, coordinating the hospitality and tourism and food industries together and working with the, the local producer groups. Thanks very much indeed.